I would wager that when making your first short film with your first set of lights, it might have looked something like this. And that's usually because you've taken a hard light and directed it straight towards your talent, which in turn makes it look like a school drama project. It's very contrasty, very harsh. And that's the core issue with LED hard lights. It's that in their default state, they're not entirely useful for small locations. For large locations with multiple hard lights outside of a window to mimic sunlight, perfect. Indoors, well, that's when you want to look to soften the hard light. Therefore, we look at softboxes, silks, diffusion sheets, and everything in our toolkit to spread the light and make it appear softer and more beautiful. Modifiers for hard light are not as plentiful as the tools for soft light. You, of course, have band doors, and depending on the model you buy, some LEDs will ship with a reflector dish, which will help direct the light into a more controllable area, somewhat usually a 55 degree angle. Likewise, you could also acquire something like this. This is a Fresnel lens, similar to the tungsten Ari Fresnel lamps that once crowded every aspiring filmmaker's wardrobe. Like the junior Fresnel lamp, LED Fresnel mount will do the same thing. It accurately finesses the beam angle of the light source. But again, it's rare for these tools to be used on talent in a small location without the outcome looking overly harsh. As you navigate towards soft light sources, you may start to negate the use of hard light. But today, I want to introduce one of my favorite hard light modifiers that help paint splashes of controlled light across the set. This is the spotlight mount. Quite like how a spotlight in theater is used to illuminate specific areas or performers on stage with a very narrow beam, the spotlight mount seeks to do the same thing on a more portable level. However, one of the core features of the mount is that it doesn't just reduce the beam to a smaller angle. But the design also incorporates shutter blades, which allow for further customization of the light beam. So let's look at two examples as to when you'd want to actually use hard light in a small interior location to help better your cinematography. All right, guys, this is our setup in this specific scene. Uh, the same character, quite like our previous tutorial, has received some bad news on the phone. It seems to be a reoccurring theme so far. And I really like the setup of what we have. We've got the Aperture Nova 300 um, illuminating our subject. We've put the egg crate on it. So it, that helps disperse and soften the light and uh, to stop the light spill itself. To further stop the light spill, I've then got a flag so it's not really uh, illuminating the um, floral decoration in front of our talent. And, and do you know what? I'm happy with this. It's kind of like a moody scene. But my biggest issue with this entire arrangement is the background. Again, it's the magnolia walls. Uh, we've got uh, a little bit of um, a wine decoration which helps break up the boringness of um, the shot but still it just there's something missing for me so using the spotlight with a gobo attachment which is in the shape of Venetian blinds uh, I'm going to turn this on and instantly that looks so much better um, it's now brought some value to the background of the composition but we do have a major issue that's way too bright in comparison to the light on our subject. We don't want that because the audience's attention is going to divert to the brightest uh, area on the screen. I'm just going to go over here and reduce the intensity. So now I'm much happy with that. It's given so a little bit of production value to the background of our area and it's just stopped the image from becoming uh, boring ultimately. And I think it's these small steps which is going to really enhance uh, your production and make it look better than the next person. All right, guys, so the spotlight isn't a one trick pony. There's a lot more uses to it than what we've just shown. And I understand that adding light to the background is quite a stylistic choice, and perhaps it isn't within your palette of tastes to do so. So I'm gonna show you another use for the spotlight, and it's my absolute favorite. So we know that uh, from a prior shot that the character is sat next to a kitchen window and we've got the sunlight coming through. And that's the motivation for this Nova 300 by here is to illuminate our talent as if it's daylight. However, uh, sunlight doesn't always <laughs> come in through the window nice and soft like that. So what I like to do is use the spotlight to add hard light into a scene like such. So now what we've got 
is the sunlight coming through like just a, a, a natural sun streak hitting our talent. It's a bit ugly, it's a bit all over the place because that's what sunlight is like. It's just harsh, hard, and it bursts through everything. Therefore, I would propose uh, for your narrative-focused um, projects where you can be a little bit more creative is mix the hard light and the soft light together, separate them. So obviously we don't have the hard light spilling onto the actor's face, but in this manner, it creates a really organic looking image. Now one more bonus tip before I leave you, the spotlight also serves as an excellent tool for creating bounce light off of interior walls. Now usually it would be impractical to use a hard light to bounce off a wall in a small location due to the wide angle of the untamed hard light. However, when using the spotlight, we can size the beam down to a relatively small shape, aim it towards the wall and have the talent standing near receive the illumination from the bounce light. It is worth noting that while I've used Aperture gear throughout this video, there are many other brands such as Godox, Nanlite, Nanlux, and others that also offer the spotlight option. I've been Lewis with Fidivo, and I hope today that you've learned why I won't arrive on set without this tool. The options are endless.